This is Verdorin, I'm Pierre Delancey. If you're finding this episode because you subscribe to my book interview podcast, welcome back. I hope that this will be a pleasant surprise. In April 2024, Verdorin expanded from a mere podcast into a physical venue in London. We've been hosting an idiosyncratic mix of exhibitions and events, addressing urgent cultural, political, and philosophical questions. Recordings of our events will appear in this feed. This, the first one, is rather special. It's a reading of a new stage play written by Oliver Bennett for an exhibition by the painter Anna Sebastian. Verdorin hosted the premiere of this work, as well as the exhibition. You'll find links to images of Anna's paintings, further information about the writer and the cast, and about Verdorin's programme in the show notes. The next voice you hear will be Oliver Bennett's, as he introduced his play, What We May Also Do, to the audience at Verdorin in July this year. Hello, hello, hello. I'm just going to say a couple of words by way of introduction to what you're about to see. Um, this is a reading, a play reading, um, of a play that I was asked to write, uh, which is quite a specific remit that I had. The play was to be a response to these paintings, these four paintings that you can see in front of you by Anna Sebastian, who's over there. Um, and these paintings are themselves written in response to a series of films called the Gloria Films, uh, which were made in 1964. And yeah, in 1964, a woman called Gloria agreed to be filmed having real-life therapy sessions. The so-called Gloria films have become famous and they're often used in therapy training. And for me, they document a moment in time, a kind of birth of therapy culture. As the recently divorced suburban Gloria tries to talk openly and intimately about details of her life, she tries to break through some internal barrier. All the time she's watched by cameras and by us many years later. Now, for me, Anna Sebastian's paintings take these Gloria films a few steps further. For me, they imagine a world, perhaps a part of our world, perhaps not, where the process that Gloria is going through in the films has itself been taken many steps further. And so when I was asked to write a response, I began to imagine what this world might look like. And I began to see a scene of a man and a woman talking intimately, all the time observed by others. I hope this isn't awkward. This needn't be awkward. Me here, the committee here watching you. Don't worry about all of them. They will uh, disappear into the background. They'll fade into insignificance. I'm allowed to say that, you see, because they're my colleagues, my friends. Do you know why we're all here? Um, is it something to do with my application? Well, firstly, we're here to help. That's all. My name is Richard. I am uh, an intermediate border guard here in the city. And this is just a trial session for both of us to see if I want to work with you, if you want to work with me. What do you mean by work? Well, do you want to be admitted into the city? I want you to be admitted into the city. The committee wants you to be admitted into the city. We want you to live here in the city. And on paper, you are, you are perfect. Very high IQ, high verbal skills. I have rarely seen a more perfect application. Well, then why am I still waiting at the Extrapole Hotel? You are staying in the Extrapole Hotel. Uh, waiting? St what? Not staying, waiting. Okay, you are waiting at the Extrapole on the other side of the city gates because, unfortunately, your application has been unsuccessful. I know, I know. But there's a criteria, okay? A process. 
Everybody who lives in the city has gone through a version of this process. Now, you've never been into the city, right? No, no. What do you know about the city? Well, I, I, I know that this is where lots of people came a, a few years ago when normal life became impossible in my country. I, I tried to stay, but it was, it was dead, lonely, no opportunities for work or, or anything. Good, good, but the city? Well, there are opportunities here. More life. I, I want that. And, um, and of course, the climate, the, 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 the flowers. Yes. <laughs> good. Very good. What's most important for you to know is that many people worked very hard to make the city into what it is. Making it independent for a start. It's a very delicate arrangement. And as you know all too well, the rest of the world has become increasingly hostile to our ideals. So we have a very strict criteria. And unfortunately, it's because of your response to a tiny part of this criteria that your application was unsuccessful. Are, are you going to say which part? Or what? Sex. It's sex. Yeah. It seems you are not sufficiently open about sex. Oh. oh you clam up when it comes to sex. Oh, that's ridiculous. It's not true. It, it's ridiculous. It? That's why it was unsuccessful. Is it really? You don't think people should be open about sex. You think we should go back to all of those old neuroses. We face them down. Is it ridiculous to defend that achievement? <laughs> Sorry? Uh, at my age, really, this? I led the research on this. We had conferences, debates, the finest minds in the city came together and proved that the key determinant as to whether a person will fit in and uphold the ideals of the city is whether they can be open about sex. People who repress it, who drive it down into the dark, are far more likely to disrupt the integrity and the security of the city. The research is clear on this. I'm not repressed. Well, I am uh, not repressed. The thing is... I am not Repressed. The more you say you're not repressed, the more I think you probably are repressed. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you truly acted on your desires? I, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Go for I, I don't want to do... Absolutely fine. I think... I think that I've come all this way at my age to hear you make assumptions about You things. are free to go. Back to where you came from. How did you describe it? Dead. Lonely. No opportunities. There was a reason you came here. You were drawn to the city like a moth to a flame. Then. What? Just. Then. The last time I acted on my desire, I wanted to scare you, to force you, and to make a little um, speech, and I did. <laughs> very good, very cute. I was playing with you, I got that. No. Very well done. Can repressed people play like that? Well, that remains to be seen, doesn't it? Fill out your little forms and let You me... haven't got a fucking clue, have you? I'm talking about loosening the attachment of your soul from its old harbours. I'm talking about a fundamental change in being, and you think this is a game you can play. You just want me to talk about sex. Honestly and openly, yes. Yes, so that you can get off on it. So I can note down my impressions. Oh, so just like a little pervert. You are miles away, aren't you? You get three sessions after an unsuccessful application and then a reappraisal. From this initial meeting, I would like to say that personally, I would very much like to take you. What about you? Yes. Good. This is really good. So, how should I be? That was our first session. Obviously, you know, you saw it. I was doing my thing in my style. 
As border guards go, I'm pretty tough. She was clearly going to be a challenge, but a welcome one. And I was confident that a few well-timed, well-placed, well-phrased questions and she would fall open like a rose. But, well, here I am, explaining myself to you, the committee. Anyway, after our first session, finishing off some other work, I ran home because that was the week, my first of staying in the glass complex. You know, the block of flats that look out across the whole city. Well, I was discovering the, the bright, dizzying whirl of life up there among the great and the good. It was so rare that a flat had become available. It was a low-down flat, small, on the shady side, no view to speak of. But if I could ingratiate myself with the other residents of the glass complex, if I could impress them, I'd get first dibs on a higher-up flat. And that evening I was due to meet them all up on the roof. I wanted to bring a, a gift, an offering of some kind. I passed through the city gates and I ran into the park. Oh, it was beautiful. The brass band in the bandstand was playing fast and loud. I think the drummer was drunk. It sounded like it could fall apart at any moment, but somehow just about it didn't. And the flowers, the city's finest, greeted me with their summer clothes, their summer colours and summer smells. I threw myself into the newly blooming yellow and green talipot palms, the pale purple hydrangeas, the deep red coxcombs. I rolled around in them, grabbing armfuls and running home. I would take these flowers, still wet on my shirt, up to the shared roof. But I needed, I needed a vase. Uh, Tom, my best friend in the city, he'd been living in the glass complex for years. He had a very, very desirable flat, quite high up on the sunny side. I knock on his door, but his girlfriend answers. Louisa, uh, you haven't got a vase I can borrow, have you? Lovely to see you too. She hisses back at me. She is stunning. In her late thirties, but in excellent shape. Leggings and sports bra accentuating a tight body that only a personal trainer can maintain. I hug her, I kiss her all over. I, I just need to take these flowers up to the roof. And there was me thinking you were coming to seduce me with the flowers again. Now, uh, this was a reference to the time we had a threesome, me, her and Tom. We were in the park one night and desire took hold of us all simultaneously and we did it. Right there in the flowers. Where's Tom? I asked. Uh, he's still at work. It wouldn't feel right without him. Uh, he wouldn't mind, she says. Look, I just need a vase first. Nothing here, sorry. In that case, I say, open wide. And I plunge a hydrangea into her mouth. She giggles out a few petals. I put my arm around her waist, scoop her onto my back, and charge up to the stairs, her squealing with delight to the roof. From here, you can see back across the whole city. And in the distance, the park, the tall gates, and the stiff, starchy world beyond. The roof was filling up with the great and the good, returning from work, lawyers, surgeons, a celebrity or two, the sons of CEOs. Their fresh bodies, uh, e as they easily removed their evening clothes, ready to receive the final rays of the sun, and they all turned to me. Not with hostility, but uncertainty. Who was this, this new guy, this city administrator with a handful of flowers and a girl on his back? I went for it. I put Louisa down and I charged up to all of them. I placed flowers in the mouths of all the sunbathing girls, in between toes and thighs, behind the ears and around the necks of the men, and they all started laughing and cheering. Their laughter and their cheers saying, yes, yes, it is possible to live like this all the time. The girls, their boyfriends, lovers and husbands and me, cartwheeling across the roof, planting flowers in flesh. I'm not repressed. No. Nope. I know, I know that's what you think, but you're wrong. That is what it looks like. Well, Mr. you're wrong. Okay, then tell me about how you lost your virginity. See? I am not repressing. You hesitated. Yes, because I couldn't, I couldn't remember. Because you'd repressed it? Because I'm old. You're not old. Well, I'm older than you. True, but I've worked with older. Well, with all ages, all cultures. Have another go. It, it, it's really not important. Is it traumatic? Uh, not at all. Look, you really can't say anything here, you know, but to me. I've forgotten. That's a lie. 
but it's fine. Look, I'll show you something, okay? Just, just watch this, all right? I lost my virginity at 17. I was ashamed of this later. I used to lie and say it was 14, 15. It was with my girlfriend at the time. We were in a hotel room. This was years before I lived in the city, obviously. We went to the chemist to buy condoms. We were really nervous. And I came within a minute. And she did not hide her disappointment. And we did not have sex for the rest of our relationship, which was another four years. I repressed so much. I was always tense. I was always ill and angry. When I finally got out of that, I came to sex with a vengeance. Hence the city, I suppose. And I never looked back. I was so much happier. And I want that for as many people as possible. I want that for you. And did you notice what happened then? Something happened then when I was talking about that. Do you notice what it was? No, nothing. Nothing happened. You didn't care, I didn't care. Nobody cared. The world did not end. Mad, huh? Mm. What do you remember about being um, a teenager, Sam? I remember everyone talking about it, obsessed by it, the same as you are. Well, I wasn't. What were you obsessed by? Normal things. I like walking with my dad. What did your dad do? He worked in the church. Ah. Okay. Right. I see. I see. Oh. No. I knew that you would react like that. Well, it often is something like that, isn't it? He wasn't religious and neither am I. Never was. It shouldn't be considered my application. I know that the city is, is against that. No, we're not against anything. We are for being liberated from it affecting the healthy expression of your desires because we faced that down. I faced that down. I realise that every time you do not acknowledge a desire, a part of you dies. Forever. Forever? Well, maybe. Well, we're done for then if no, it dies forever. Just a turn of phrase, okay? You can reopen doors inside yourself. Don't get distracted. Just stay with the process. He was a cleaner in a church. And there was one week, I must have been about 15, he took me with him to make sure that I was studying. I sat in a little back room pretending to study and listening to the rain on the roof and, um, and the rhythm of the Bible. And I heard the priest's voice from the shadows. Oh, God. No, no, not, not that. He just walked up to me and started talking about how I was at the right age when I would be thinking about sex. And maybe he thought I was someone else. I don't know. But he was, he was, he was very sweet, really. I, I didn't interrupt him. And he put his hand on mine and said, but you have to be careful. It's dangerous. Your body and soul are one. If you give your body to anyone you are not spiritually joined with, there will be a split in your soul and you'll be punished with pain forever. Well, wow. Okay, well. Wow. I suppose that Stuck. It would, yeah. Punished with pain. Well. Boys would try uh, at parties, on buses, everywhere they could. They tried. And, oh, it, it hurt. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'm being punished with pain. Your face changed then. Became soft and clear. Oh. What about after that? Nothing. Well, you never tried? No. Not even out of curiosity? I closed that door. That is a stunning lack of curiosity. All your life, all those years. But I'm not old. No. 
And I, I'm a woman. I'm not driven in the same way. No, as that's well. a myth. Blind tests show men and women are just the same. You should see the women in the city. It's not your fault, okay? You've just had that door closed. This isn't as significant as you think. I understand why you would say that, but I promise you that is not true. You told anyone that before? Well, why should I? I only told you because of the process. And you told me what you told me. And I like you. Very sweet of you to say. That's true. Is it? Yeah. Then I'll say thank you. Great, this is good. Big step. Fascinating. So rare to find someone with such a significant barrier. Most people just fall open easily these days. Which means, unfortunately, that you do have a long way to go. But we've only got one more session um, uh, um, before the reappraisal. I know, I know. Well, what would the next step be? Look, honestly, you are a long way off. These things take time. Sometimes it's not even the right time. D just please tell me the next step. Well, I... I'd have to be satisfied that there'd been a, a fundamental change of being. Well, how? It's, it's complicated, but you, you'd have to prove to me that there'd been a significant change of being. Prove it? I shouldn't have said that. Prove it. It just slipped out. I, I knew she was miles away. I knew this. Anyway, that evening, after that session, I was, I was up on the roof again. I was flirting and massaging girls from the glass complex. My flowers had gone down so well that I'd added to them. Flowers the residents couldn't even name. The smell was almost sickening, and I heard a voice whisper in my ear saying, I am so horny. I turned, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous Louisa. What else could I say? In that case, I said, and when we went down to her flat, and she throws me down on the bed. And their flat is beautiful. It has a, a large curtainless window that looks out onto the other adjacent glass block. And we're naked and kissing and touching. And I realised that... Fuck. No, my excitement. I hadn't taken my, my pill. I didn't need a whole pill. It just a, For a while now, I, I needed a, a half a, a blue pill just to do things properly. I just need to go to the toilet. I whisper to her, and she sighs, frustrated, like time is running out. I'm, I'm, I'm desperate, just, just two seconds, and she's watching me, so I can't just go and take my wallet to the bathroom. That would be suspicious, so I just, I just grab my trousers. What are you doing, she says. I, I, just uh, uh, a habit thing, I say, without elaborating, without putting them down, just backing into the bathroom with my trousers in my hands, like this is a normal thing to do. What are you doing? And she chases after me, but I'm quicker. I slide the bathroom door shut and snap the lock but the bathroom door is glass too, so I have to turn my back to her and pull out my wallet. Now, where in simpler times, condoms would be kept, there's now a cluster of blue pills in cling film. I take a nibble. That's bitter, like ash in my mouth. What are you doing in there? She's trying to force the door. She'll find me, she'll find the pills, it will be awful. I throw them in the toilet, flush them down and turn. All smiles, I'm oh, just really dehydrated, sorry. It's gone now. And we go again, touching and kissing, but it isn't kicking in and I'm panicking now. I know there's nothing left and something's changed in her. She's, she's prickly and stiff and then she stands and she goes to the bathroom, also taking her trousers. I chase after her, but now the bathroom door slides shut in my face and she too turns her back and I watch her silhouette as she rummages around and raises an arm, what looks like a a thin needle in her hand brought down in a stabbing motion into what, her leg? Her thigh? Some deep breaths later and she's back, jumping on me and we're suddenly into it again, but my nibble's come and gone, it's, it's worn off. I managed to fake it through some moves, but then a flash goes off in my head and I genuinely do have a splitting headache. I even cry out. I catch my reflection in the glass window and I look ridiculous. My head is pounding, my mouth is dry. It must be the accumulation of those blue pills catching up with me. And Louisa looks the same. Blotchy and dry mouthed. It's okay, she says. And we lie side by side on the bed. And Tom comes back. And he sees us and he starts laughing. So Louisa laughs too. And then I'm laughing. And we're all laughing with what sounds like relief. And I let my head slide back off the side of the bed. 
and I look out of the window at the other block of the glass complex, all upside down. The flat directly opposite is completely empty. I thought that block was occupied, wasn't it? And beyond it, I see the parts, the flowers, and the gates all hanging upside down, as though they're clinging on and waiting to receive them should they fall. All that empty air. Done. What? The task you set. I didn't set a task. Well, it's done. Well, I'm ready. What are you talking about? Prove it, you said. No, no, I said. And said. it's done. But you were miles off. All done. You were miles away. You don't believe me? Look, last session you could hardly talk about sex for fear of being punished by God, and now you're saying you've... What, what have you done? What do you want me to do? I met someone in the hotel last night. Are you, are you okay? Well, you, you told me to. No, I was saying that would be the next step, but you were not at the next step. So? F f what? What happened? Well, do I have to... Tell me, yes. Who was it? It was a stranger. Sure. A man. I see him. I met him in the bar in the extra pole. Another applicant? Well, I don't think so. I, I hadn't seen him before. So what was he doing in the extra pole hotel? I don't know. What did he look like? Normal and, and... No, 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 this is too... This just happened, just like this, so easily. One more session left. It can't have been that easy. I, I felt so much freer after our last session. We talked and it was nice and friendly. But it can't have been that easy. Well, no. I... Uh... Um, I did get nervous. Yes. Panicked at the last minute. Yes, of course you did. But he, he followed me. Yes. Yes. He held you. Yes, by my wrist. So you must have struggled. A little, but... No, but you must have struggled. Uh, I, I wanted to cry out, but he put his... Hand in front of my mouth. He kept it there. Yes. And you tried to wrestle free, but he kept it there. I, I tried screaming out. But you couldn't. But no. But he liked you trying. Yes, and, and I, I was struggling with myself, trying to remember what you had said, trying to give myself up to it to open that door. And you could feel his heart pounding. His sweat was dripping in my face. He felt desperate. <laughs> And, and relax at the same time. Are you okay? Yes, of course. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. That's very, that's very good. Thank you. You didn't feel um, what you said, the, the punished by pain. Do I go through now? What? What, does that mean that I'm through? Uh, no, I've, I have forms. I have um, forms to... Um, oh, of yeah. course. Uh, they're punished uh, by... Um, it is a media that decides, ultimately. Uh, I, I, I fill out forms, give my honest impressions, and that's taken into account on the reappraisal. But uh, thank you. Thank you. It was very... Very helpful. The next day, uh, wasn't it? You can, you can look back, you can check. I want this testimony to be completely accurate. I was doing another session, another applicant. Disappointingly easy. All done in, in half a session. The desire opening like the door of a summer house. And then I got your email. That her application had been reviewed in the light of my form. And she'd been successfully admitted which is great, a job well done, and I hit my target. I was a little surprised that she'd been judged ready, but there you go. The process works, and I've still got it. Good luck to her in the city. She'll find a job in no time. I'd never meet her again, obviously. Uh, a contact with former applicants is strictly prohibited, but as I'd hit my target, I was now a senior border guard agent. A little bit of extra pay. I've done it. 
And I had to run back in for another session, another applicant, but the air conditioning is really playing up, which is really fucking annoying, actually. I've spoken to you about this before. It's impossible to work if the air conditioning is playing up. I'm sitting here and, and, and sweating for a whole hour. It's not good enough. We have to hold ourselves to a higher standard. We're the city. We have to do better. What's the city for? I suppose a week uh, must have passed. Ten days. I woke up with a strange sensation that I'd had a dream. There was no clear memory of the dream, but I had dreamed. We don't dream here. No stopped years ago, soon after I arrived in the city. It's like our brains don't need it. What need would we have of dreams? We live in a dream. The city is a dream. I don't remember any of the details, just her. Her face behind glass, watching me. So I tried to throw myself into work. Uh, I finished a few more applications and then there were no more, apparently. For now, I had no live applicants. Fewer people are coming, apparently. Louisa messaged me. Uh, was I free tonight, she said, because she needed to see me. I bumped into her on the roof several times since our last encounter. She congratulated me on my promotion. She must have wanted to give it another go. But that dream wouldn't go. It wouldn't fade. The gates were standing open. I was about to pass through them into the park. I could see the glass complex in the distance. The flowers and the band were singing me a path straight there, but I was suddenly frightened. I'd need more pills, wouldn't I, if I was seeing Louisa after I flushed my stash away, so I go to the chemist, but they're out of stock. Really? Nothing, I say? All out. Sorry. Even run out of the female version. Female version? I didn't know there was a... Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's injected, they say. In the thigh. Oh, I say. I hovered by the gates, but I didn't want to go home. I needed a drink. I looked around and there was just the Extra Pole Hotel. Now, strictly speaking, we are not allowed to mix border guards and applicants. I know, but I didn't have any applicants, you know, so I went in. I sat in the corner. I could see all the hopeful applicants there, trying to loosen themselves up, drinking to wash away their old assumptions and have the chance to be themselves, truly. Oh. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not usually here, obviously. And what... Sorry, what are you doing here? How are you doing? No, I know, but... but you? But uh, the, the same, just, just having a drink. Aren't you going to get yourself a drink? Yes, I, uh, but, but, but why are you here? Relaxing. Trying to loosen up. But here, you, you shouldn't be here anymore. Why? Because you, you got through. You, congratulations, uh, by the way, because you... Oh, thank you. It's weird because I... I really shouldn't say this, but I... I found you fascinating, really. Thank you. Intriguing. Thank you. I mean, I found myself thinking about you. Thank you. Is that all you can say? I'm telling you I find you fascinating. You're just saying thank you. I'm sorry. No, it's good. I like it. You see, I think I dreamed about you. Look, I'm sorry. Do I know you? What? Have we met before? Well, obviously, you think you know me, but, but I'm afraid I can't place you. <laughs> it's Nicky. Richard. Your border guard. Your, 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 your application. You're joking. No, it was, it was like 10 days ago. You, you got in. I helped you. You got through. It, it, it was successful. I helped you. I wish. I haven't got in yet. You did. 
You see, they email me. I, I see which of my applicants has been admitted. So you shouldn't be here. You should be in the city. I'm having a session. No, you had them with, from me, with me, and you got in. But then why would I be on this side of the gate here at the extra... I don't know. That's why I, what I'm asking you. Because I'm in the process. No, you can't be. It's an important process. I know it is, because I did it with you, because I'm Richard. Look, I'm very sorry, but I have to go. No, no, no. And she places a glass down, and she disappears out of the bar. I run after her, but she's surprisingly sprightly on the staircase. I follow her fast, but she disappeared into a room. I jam my foot into the closing door, and I say, Look, you came here. You told me all about it, all about your, your childhood, the, 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 the priest, the church. The, the rain, the repression, and I helped you. So what the fuck are you doing? I have no idea what you're talking about. You told me, and we had a connection. Please don't disrupt the process. Something passed between us when you were talking to me. I haven't felt that in a long time. I haven't been able to stop thinking about it and about you. And Please stop. Why? Because you don't understand. And I looked into her eyes. I held her wrists. She struggled. So I held my hand over her mouth. And it was my heart pounding. My sweat dripping onto her face. Me desperate and relaxed at the same time. My first time unaided in months. Yes. When it was over, she didn't move. Her wrists were bruised. And I was in pain from where she'd struggled, and we both lie there, covered in pain. I said, are you okay? I'm not, I'm not this. I'm not normally this. I inch my arm out from under her. I say, are you okay? And nothing. I leave. A drunk driver walking away from the crash, but I hadn't even had a drink. There was a pain splitting in my head as I passed through the city gates, past the flowers and the the mad band, I tried to creep unseen, but the evening sun's at my back like a spotlight, following me. There was a voice note from Louisa. It wasn't what I thought. She just wanted to give me a heads up that her and Tom were moving up to a flat on the higher floor. Someone has left, they think, which is strange. No one leaves. But it meant that their flat was available and it would be easier for everyone if I could take it, as I could now afford it. Everyone in the block wanted me to move higher up. I was welcome for any distraction, anything to focus on, so I agreed. I'd be closer to the roof. I'd get the evening sun, the, the view, and I think the pain in my head is lifting. As I unpack my suitcases and Tom is beaming a smile at me, patting me on the back, pouring champagne, I think at least I have this. I've achieved this. And we're all there in front of the large window in the evening sun. Congratulations, buddy. Tom hands me a glass. We toast my move. You too, bud. They're both giddy, seem to be horny. They start kissing and moving to the bed. My bed now. Has Louisa injected herself again? Has Tom managed to get hold of pills? Why doesn't he need that? Has she told him about our small failure? They're trying to get me to join them on the bed, but I stay by the window, looking out at the view, my view now but I immediately wish I hadn't. And the pain in my head comes back because standing there in the flat opposite that was empty is her. Whoever the hell she is, it's her. Celebration time, my friend, Tom says. But I'm just staring out, looking closer, and it's definitely her. I can make out the bruises on her wrists. You okay? What are you looking at? Tom says. Uh, nothing, I said, just... Just that woman, and I, I, I thought that flat was empty. Oh, Louisa says, she's back, is she? And they carry on kissing. I say, what? Oh, she's back. Your new neighbor now. You know her? Of course not, Tom says, a little bemused. She, um, she, 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 she was an applicant of mine. 
she she came here and she she got in like uh, ten days ago or something. And then I don't know. Actually, I kind of I think I saw her the other night uh, at the Extrapole Hotel again, which is weird. What are you talking about? Tom says. And I know I'm not making any sense. She's lived in that block in that flat for years. Tom says. What I said? Years. Yeah, as long as we've lived here. Yeah, she was here when we moved in, Louisa adds, between kisses. And that doesn't make any sense, I say. Yeah, she comes and goes. Her work, I guess. What, 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 what's her name? I don't know. Why do you care, Tom says? Because I want to know, okay? Because it's important. Oh, chill, man. Okay, what's wrong? Nothing. It's a simple fucking question. Who is she? I'm telling you, I don't know, Tom says. They get the fuck out of my flat. They're both still horny, but I have killed the vibe stone dead. Jesus Christ, they mutter as they take their suitcases and champagne and leave me, staring across at her. I want to close the curtains, but I know there are no curtains in these flats. And she's just looking at me, watching me. And then she turns away. But there's no way out now. And I'm being punished. And I know that there is no hope for me. So that's why I came here. To talk to you, to the committee. Because something is happening here. I know I'm not, I'm not going mad. I've never been mad, but something doesn't make sense. And I think, and please don't, don't, don't laugh at me, but I think I am being punished with pain because, because she said in one, of our, in one of our sessions, you can check, you can watch back, she, she said about a, a split her, her soul split and punished with pain. I, I don't know, okay? I don't, I don't understand. The committee are all just looking at me, calm, concerned that they're saying nothing. Look, I made an error of judgment. Clearly, I say. I, I fucked up here. I really fucked up and I'm being punished because it's what she said. Her, her soul, you see, something is fucking with me here. And there's a long pause. And then one of the committee says, nothing is fucking with you. I say, it is. Look, it, it must be. They say, we think you should calm down, Richard. And then another one says, look, she does this. I say, what? They say, this, this is what she does. True, I say, her. The woman, they say. Others are starting to do it too. What? says she leaves. She reapplies, deliberately fails the test, and goes through the process again. Why, why, why would she do that? It keeps her going. We let her do it. She came here years and years ago. But as we understand it, she struggles. Depression, despair, desire, dying. This is how she keeps herself going. Say, no, it's not that. It's, it's what she fucking said. We don't want a scene here, Richard. I am being punished. We really don't want you to cause a scene here, Richard. You see, you're punishing me. We're not. We look after our border guards. Obviously, there have been issues here, and you've disrupted her process. Yes, and I'm being punished. No, 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 that wouldn't be fair. You've been open. You've been honest with us. But we do think, from what you've said, that you could... Maybe benefit from going through the process again yourself. I say, no, I really don't think. You look tired. Why don't we call you a taxi? Can't you see what is happening here? I am being punished by... We know you've been working hard. We know life in the city can be exhausting. I'm being punished with pain forever. Just rest now. We'll talk tomorrow about putting you back into the process. I say, please, no. I say, well, you sure we can't call you a taxi? And they didn't listen. They didn't understand that it wasn't that. It was what she said. The taxi drops me outside the glass complex. I needed to find her, but she wasn't in the flat opposite anymore. It looks abandoned again. And so I walked through the suburbs, through the public squares. I can't stop walking. I'm desperate to bump into her. But every corner I turn, every street I meet, she's not there. All through the mad city, she is not 
There, I walk into the park, past the flowers. They're so bright, as if they're about to explode into meaning, past the band setting up in the bandstand, towards the tall gates standing open, and I turn to look back at the city, gleaming, implacable. If I left, would it miss me? And when I turn back, I think I see her. Yeah, she's dragging her suitcase up ahead through the, through the gates. I say, what are you doing? Are you doing it again? He said, what they said, that you're, you're, you're leaving to come back. Or, or are you going somewhere else? Is there anywhere else? And she turns. I think her face looks different now. It's soft and clear. And I say, no, it's what you said, isn't it? And we're being punished. But I can't tell if she's looking at me or at the city. And my words are lost anyway. Smothered in the rising music from the band. And by the time they would reach her, she's turned. And gone. Mm-hmm. 